So in my ducted fan testing, I found that thrust tubes, which are essentially converging nozzles, have the biggest impact on the thrust output. In my last two videos, I've seen how thrust tubes can increase EF thrust by over 50%, which easily contributes about double the thrust that it weighs. The short ex explanation I can give for this is that when you decrease the exit area, you get a greater exit velocity as the mass flow is conserved and the turbulent swirling flow is partially smoothened out by the compression. Flight Test wrote a really cool article on this, which I'll link in the description. It sums up the aerodynamics pretty well. During my testing, however, it was both expensive in cost and time to play around with different length thrust tubes. I was testing a bunch of ones from 20 mil all the way up to 280 millimeter tubes and was printing one individually each time I wanted to test it. And I thought it would be cool if I could test different thrust tube lengths on the same system. I designed a simple rack and pinion mechanism that uses a micro server to slide a portion of the exhaust back and forth while the fan is in action. This will be a quick video. I'm going to go over the process of how I made it, some very high level testing, and then some motivation and applications of this if you want to stick around for that. So my first prototype was a very good lesson in structural dynamics. I got the rack and pinion design off of Thingiverse from users same and one and designed an inner and outer portion of the exhaust. With the pins and tight fit of the inner tube, I was able to move around with some force while retaining a airtight seal. Printing these were pretty simple. However, the gaps that I had left for the rack and pinion slots allowed the outer tube to twist when the servo force was applied to the inner tube. I actually burnt out the servo trying to force the inner tube to move, but you can see that at least the rack and pinion mechanism itself is functioning fine. So my second prototype, I printed it out in PLA plus instead of the matte white PLA I was using to add rigidity. I closed off all the slots by bridging them and I modified the inner tube slightly by adding two ridges instead of a full surface. This hopefully cuts down on the friction force as it slides in and out of the outer tube. It also cuts down on weight. The servo mechanism can now actuate pretty smoothly. A slight issue that I was running into is that the micro server I was using has only 180 degrees of rotation uh, or 90 degrees in two ways. Because of this, I was limited in the maximum and the minimum lengths of the exhaust tube because of the size of my gears. I could have made a bigger gear, but I was kind of too lazy and I decided that what I had was good enough for now. In my final design, I placed the pinion in the middle of the rack to take advantage of a full 90 degrees on both sides. So in the end, the design had a 90% area of fan reduction, which is what that flight test article recommended. In the rested position, it measures at 95 millimeters in total, with bounds of 85 millimeters all the way up to 105 millimeters. So my testing rig is this thrust lever that I basically use in every video by now. I had to tape something on the front to balance out the weight of the servo. The biggest thing to factor in this data is the different weights that results from the varying configuration of the thrust tube. To simplify everything, I'm only testing at the neutral point, the outermost point, which subtracts about three and a half grams from the reading, and the furthermost inward point, which adds about 3.5 grams to the reading. So this first test is at 10% throttle, at neutral, it's settled at 52 grams. When it's fully in, it jumped up to 54. From neutral to fully out, it went from 56 grams to 51. And so adjusting for the torque variance, this means that the fully in orientation was half a gram better and the fully out orientation was one and a half grams worse than the neutral position. The second test is at 30% throttle. And I did this one slightly differently. I went from fully out to fully in. This was about a three gram jump. And adjusting for the variance, this means that there is about a four gram difference from the outermost configuration versus the innermost one, as a seven gram increase was expected and only three was red. So obviously these are very far from legit tests, but I hope they can demonstrate the potential of variable length thrust tubes. The real advantage I see to this, besides testing different thrust tube lengths at the same time, is varying the exhaust length and optimizing it over different flow speeds. These are pretty basic aerodynamic concepts. The velocity of the flow, the exit area, and the thrust output, the speed, all of that is coupled. And so it stands to reason that at different flow speeds, or at least at different fan RPMs, the optimal length of the exhaust changes. There are things like in jet nozzles that adjust exit angle based on the flow speed. But the point of this project is to focus on the length specifically. This design is weighing in at 127 grams 
And so at a hobby scale at least, the extra weight of the pinion, the rack, the extra tube, and the servo might not be worth the gains, but who knows. I definitely want to keep working on this a little longer. My main goals for the next iteration is smoothing the tube connections to cut down on the perpendicular surfaces. It's definitely hurting the general performance of the EDF, although for this project I just wanted to see the relative performance of each link. And then along with that, getting better tolerances to improve on the general performance. The main source of losses here is probably going to be the friction between the inner and outer tube. I also want to either buy a servo that goes over 180 degrees or just make a bigger gear so I can have a lot more range of length to test over. And then lastly, um, finding out a way to automate the server based on the flow speed. This really is the heart of the project. If I can figure out how to read the throttle data directly, um, something like an Arduino could very easily actuate the servo for me as the throttle goes up and down. Again, that's probably like the most real world application for this. Anyways, I'd like to hear any comments or criticisms on the aerodynamics here in particular. I'm sure this type of thing has been done and thought about, I just couldn't find much documentation online. But thanks for watching guys.